So this is what happens when we see usually like that heel disconnection or even, um, you know, that quad dominance, like we'll obviously elaborate more on. So then this move right here then prohibits the athlete to really optimizing that hip shoulder separation. Why? Because you have Bach. Because you have energy going this way. Okay, which is going to mean that you have to almost open this back hip up early, earlier than you would if you had real good directional energy from a hip hinge. So then this has to open up to be, you know, in a somewhat efficient, consistent position at ball release. So then that's going to uh, limit your ability to maximize that hip shoulder separation because this throwing shoulder is now gonna have to match that rear hip angle to throw and be on time and be consistent and um, you know to compensate, right? Unless, or instead, what we want to see is optimize of the whole entire delivery. But when talking about you know that hip hinge pattern and the and why it's so crucial and, and you know why we see so many breakdowns is because when we hinge not only are we really maximizing our relative strength in terms of like, just think about it in super simplistic terms. Um, I've tried to dumb it down and I've, I've come up with this analogy of like, we're able and say we're in the gym, right? We're, we're, we're able to pick up more weight from the ground, right? Than we are if we had to squat that weight. Okay, so two different patterns, one obviously, hip hinging, right, RDL stuff, and then the other squatting, right, where you see that knee go over. Now, the reason why I use that analogy is because more often times than not, it clicks with a kid because he's got ridiculous deadlift numbers because you're able to pull and really use, you know, your glute, and then, the, and then you know, their squat numbers or whatever. But the other importance is that our glutes are the biggest, most strongest muscles in our body, okay? So when we're talking about applying force into the ground, when we're talking about really maximizing that potential kinetic energy that we're gonna be getting up through the kinetic chain and out through the fingertips, we really wanna maximize this, right? So if we can hinge, we can therefore get into a more powerful position, utilizing our biggest muscles, apply more force and energy into the ground, okay? Hold and accept more, transfer more, okay? Um, but also on top of that is now our direction becomes way more linear, which is now gonna maximize our ability to create a ton of separation right so now with this trail hip going linear and not off alignment we are now able to really create that rotational elastic energy because now this can open up on time into a relatively simple 45 degree angle at front foot strike and then now we can think about that counter rotation of the trunk and the shoulders right so then we create this and this is you know this is like the biggest indicator of throwing velocity is the amount of, of hip shoulder separation, okay? So then, once we get into that optimal position, now we have all this built up elastic, rotational torque, energy, whatever you wanna call it, like we have it, and now we're able to express it out front, and all of these patterns that we're talking about are in sync, on time, happening, you know, in the blink of an eye. So it's important to really maximize the ability to hip hinge. And I understand the dynamic of an individual not having, you know, like from an anatomy standpoint, not having the ability to hip hinge. But I will tell you more often times than not, I would say out of the thousands of clients that I've worked with, more often times than not, it's just the, the inability to have or to express authentic single leg stability, okay? Because everyone, not everyone, but 
we all essentially have the motor control pattern of a hip hinge, okay? When we talk about deadlifting, we're hip hinging. We're hinging at the hips, okay? The knees are, are essentially staying in that position and we're hinging. We may be limited to that movement potential, right? Which could always be increased, but we have that ability. We just need to be able to do it on the mound. So what we see, like I said, that drive leg stability and obviously with guys that have very unstable drive legs is when we put them up in a test of a single leg squat to box, can you come here, right? Have the coordination, balance, and athleticism to own this position, okay? Now we're gonna eccentrically control the squat, okay? Or we're gonna control the eccentric vert portion of the squat. So maybe even count to five, right? Five, four, three, two, one, okay? So I've shown that I have the authentic stability to control the eccentric version of that. What we see a lot of times is guys that don't have the authentic stability of that drive leg will go, okay, oh boy. And then get right about here and go, huh, okay. So that's why it's so important to really maximize the stability and the strength of our single leg, okay? Not only in our drive leg, for all the reasons mentioned before, but also in the lead leg, because when it comes time to touch down and then accept that force from the ground, right? Accept all of the energy that we've produced in the backside. And now we have to stabilize that force, right? That's why they call it lead leg block. Now we have to stabilize it and make sure we can block that to, make, to allow it to come up to the kinetic chain and out through the finger at ball release, all happening at once, right? Like you see those commercials of the, the test, the test dummies in those cars, right? When they're going at a super rapid speed and then that car hits that wall, it blocks the car from going any further. And then those test dummies fly out, right? It's kind of that same thing. Now, when we're in our descend down the mound and we're about to transfer our full energy potential from the back to the front, it's boom, lead leg, lead foot down, stabilize, okay? Then now the pelvis rotates, okay? The pelvis rotation now pulls that femur into that lead leg block out through the fingertips of ball release. Now you have complete mechanical efficiency and that's when you start talking about that effortless velocity, okay? That's, that's where it's at, guys. The ability to not try to throw hard, not think about throw hard, not think about arm speed, but when it comes time to throw, it just comes out hot because all the moving parts in the delivery are flawless, you know? Like, obviously, we're not always gonna be perfect, but all of the moving parts in the delivery are, are occurring on time and in, you know, in session with one another. And then it's boom. Then you can finish like a gangster and be like, what up, dude? 